Okay, so this is where we got to in the last video. We'd made the stamp. So now we've got to make the pretzel. So I've got another bit of this breaker steel. Um, it was free, so I'm going to use it. I've cut the end off because it was a chisel point, and I broke the last little bit. I don't know if you can see if it'll focus. No, it probably won't, but it's it's a very fine grain, so it's 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 a good good bit of steel. So um, this is three quarter. Now all my others I've made down here are out of five eight, so it's about an eighth of an inch bigger. I only made these out of five eight because I came across a box load of five eight um, Allen wrenches, so I straightened them all out and used them for pretzels. I've got them all different sizes, as you can see. There's three, uh, three there, different sizes ranging from quite tiny up to relatively big and now even bigger you can never have too many stamps so let's get it warm if I can get my fire going it's really playing up today it doesn't want to go so I'm going to give it a, a poke get it going right so a quick recap on last time this is a nail that I've cut off and made the stamp to exactly the same size as the end of the nail. Now the pritchel wants to be made the same size but then a net bigger because it will punch out what the stamp does and obviously a lot more slender as you can see. So that's what we've got to do next. Get it nice and hot and give it some beans. Oh, I wish I had a power hammer. One day, when I get a bigger shop. So, just draw it down. Draw it down square to start with. Obviously, it's going to be like the stamp. It's going to be um, slightly wider one way than the other. We don't need to worry about that until you get much further down. This is pretty tough stuff. It's not coming down as quickly as I'd like, but persevere. And it's actually a lot colder than it looks there. Oh, got it a little bit warm. Never mind. Carry on. I've never actually bought any S7 or H13. Um, I've always used what I've found. Found materials is my game. Um, having said that, I did buy some uh, EN19 and EN26 for some pins and uh, I think I made one of my hammers out of the EN19. EN but generally, I use found steel. You can usually tell if it's going to be good steel as to what it was for in the first place. Like these points, breaker points, you know it's going to be pretty good steel because of what they're used for. Um, half shafts from trucks or cars. Again, pretty good stuff. I've made many a tool out of a lump of half shaft. In my youth that was. Not these days. So you can find all sorts of useful steel kicking about. You just have to think what it was used for originally. Now we're getting there. I've changed hammers. Gone down to my rounding hammer. Have a bit more control. We're getting there. Just want to make it a bit tidier. Go 
down a size hammer again. This is my finishing hammer. Don't know what it is about this one. It's got a nice balance to it, this hammer. I really like it and I use it for all sorts of things. Right, now is the time to start thinking about making it thicker one way than the other, or wider one way than the other. Work out which way you're going to do it and stick to it. Just giving it a little bump there to flatten that end off. That is just about it. Get it nice and straight still. Yep, I reckon that's it. I don't know if you can see that. But it's longer that way than the other. See if I can sh actually show you how it compares to the stamp. It's actually quite a bit smaller than the stamp, which is fine because I've got to file it anyway. I'm going to finish it off by hand just with a file. Bring it back to the size of the stamp. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's still hot but it's cooling down rapidly and I don't know if you'll be able to hear it but it's it's squealing a little bit because this stuff is air hardening as I described in the last video. keep checking because obviously you don't want it too far out. Now what I'm aiming for is to make it exactly the same as the stamp. That's what I'm looking for at the moment. Try a bigger rasp file. It's a slightly sharper one. Do the last few strokes. I think that's about it. Yep, cock on. Right, so, you will remember I always said that the end of this wants to be a gnat's larger than that, the stamp. So, we're going to do that now. So, we're just going to get it warm, just the very end. And all I'm going to do, stand it up on the anvil and give it a bump. That's it. That's all it needs. Obviously, depending on how hot you've got it. It's just enough to just mushroom that end out. So what I'm going to do now, heat it up, let it cool. But before I do that, I'm going to whip it off with an angle grinder and tidy the end up. So I whipped it off with the angle grinder. Just tidy it up. Put a nice little chamfer on there, so when you hit it you're not going to get any bits coming off the edge. That'll do it. So now I'm just going to heat it up gently, and leave it on here for a while to soak. We get a nice through temperature. Now I'm doing the, the fat end first. Obviously because if you put the thin end in first, that's going to get hot too quick. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, do not look too bad, it's getting there. So I'm doing it slowly. Another few minutes. I have edited this bit out, by the way, to make it uh, go a lot quicker. Isn't quite in real time this bit, but we're nearly there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, like I did with the stamp, just, I've got a, um, a hardy, no not a hardy, um, what have I got? A tool that goes in the um, swage block. 
standing up underneath my fire and I'm just going to rest it on top so that it's not touching anything apart from on one edge which I'll put on the fat edge at the top so it's resting in cool air or still air should I say not cool air still air right so it's cooled down it took a while but I've had a cup of tea I've given it a quick wire brush up and that's quite a nice feel now hexagon has advantages and disadvantages uh, the advantage is obviously it's not going to roll off the anvil the disadvantage is that when you pick it up when you're working with it you might not immediately know which orientation you're in because obviously it's wider one way than the other I I know because I've used hexagon tools for years like this so I you know it's second nature to me but if you're starting out what you might want to do is flatten it so that it's more oval so that you've got a, a wider side so this side I would flatten so that when you pick it up you immediately know you're in the right orientation for punching your holes you don't want to be mucking, mucking about trying to figure out which way around to do it and obviously if you're using round you have to because it'll just roll off the off the anvil so I'm going to try it out I've got a couple of bits of uh, 3 quarter 3 8 12 and 3 quarter inches long I've got a couple of shoes I need to make uh, so I'm going to try it out obviously when you first try out your, your stamps and your pritchels you want to use an old shoe pick, pick out a couple of good old shoes get them hot and play about with it because you know f full well it ain't gonna work first time out so I'm banking on it not working first time but I'm hoping it won't be that far out that I can just give it a quick tweak and we can crack on these things do need a little bit of tweaking and they need maintenance of course once you've got them right they're going through a tough life so you've got to keep them maintained whatever steel you use they will wear all right let's have a go feels quite nice now I can feel immediately that didn't go through there's something not right there same with that one didn't go through oh burning my steel burning 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 the other shoe um, yeah that's not right so I've got to have a bit of a tweak yeah you can I don't know if you can see there it's punched it's domed them it hasn't punched them out so that Pritchard wants a little bit of a, a tweak so let's go and do that before we get any further. Now unfortunately I forgot to turn the camera on. Typical. So I've all I've done is I've literally filed it down on all four sides very very slightly. Just so it's slightly thinner. It just felt like it was binding in the hole a little bit too fat. And then just dome the end again so that you've got basically a bit of clearance around but the, the doming on the end or the mushrooming on the end will act like a shear but you've got a little bit of clearance behind it so let's try this time now that's better you can feel it you just all can feel it straight away that that's gone through yeah you see they've gone this time So let's have a little look before I go any further. I really mullered that other shoe. Let's have a quick look down here, see if we can find those bits. Yeah, there's one. There's the other one. Oh, that one's hot. That one, oh yeah, that one's still hot. But there you go. That's what you're looking for. And if you turning it right you'll end up with oh lost one you'll end up with these stuck to the bottom of your boots let's have a look if so you can see that nice little rectangle punched out and so you get them stuck to your boots when you've got it right 
So let's crack on, just finish these shoes off and then we'll have a look at the results. I'm going to use these for one of my ponies that I do, I'm doing on Thursday. Normally just stick a pair of handmaid, a pair of machine maids on him, but I thought this would be a nice little treat for him. Have a couple of handmaids on for a change. If you watch carefully at times you will just see there we go, there's one. Just gone dropped out. There you go. And the holes look clean. That's the other thing. You can sometimes punch through, but the holes aren't clean. They're it's almost forced its way through, burst out rather than punched out a nice clean little rectangle. That's generally happens when you're Pritchell's too small and it literally just forces its way through you get ragged edges and it's all nasty and you have to really severely back Pritchell to get a decent hole and there I don't know if you can see that nice square or rectangular holes Oh, knock it all on the floor. I haven't made shoes for years. Well, not years, but for a long while. I don't make them regularly these days. I did a video a couple of weeks ago doing a pair because I hadn't done anything for a long long while and I needed a pair for um, oh that one didn't come out but came off quickly needed a pair of quarter clip fronts for a little thoroughbredy x race horsey thing I've been putting machine maids on and I just needed it doesn't grow any foot so I needed some holes in some different places so again, I thought I'd treat him with a pair of handmaids. However good the machine maids are these days, it's still lovely to put on a pair of handmaids. There you go, nice clean holes. Speed this up a bit. I don't want to bore you to death. Always go through the second time with your Pritchell. Just uh, puts the holes back into the proper shape. There you go. Not bad at all. Considering it's a brand new stamp and Pritchell, ain't doing bad. Now making these in a traditional hunter style. Well, no, actually I'm not because I haven't put pe not putting penciled heels on, I've put upright heels on, but a sort of hunter style. Perhaps I'm talking rubbish, but there you go. Never mind. It's been a long day. Don't know if people still use penciled heels these days. Everything seems to be upright heels now. There you go. 
Right, I'm just going to quickly clip these up. People seem to like this bit, so I'll show you this bit. Find my mark, which I put in at the beginning. Knock over a lump. Draw her out. Simple as that. Blend it back in. Bob's your uncle. Right now, there you go. All the books will tell you you don't need a back pritchel, but in 40 years, I've never come across a case where you don't back pritchel. I don't know, you must have to be some sort of superman. You don't need to back pritchel a lot. You can see I'm only just gently tapping, just to take the burrs off and make sure the holes are, are all the right um, shape and size. There you go. But uh, I've never, as I say, been able to make a shoe without having to just put a back pritchel through a, a, a tiny bit. Especially even if you're shaping up when you're fitting. You know, you can distort the holes slightly. So it's literally just tap. It's not a huge hit. It's literally just a tap. There you go. Right, so let's uh, have a little look at the tools, see how they've held up. Now I know I've only made a pair, but they're absolutely untouched. You can see where the heat's come up, but they're exactly the same as they were. Obviously they're going to need maintenance over the years and months and all the rest of it, but they hold up. You could do, probably do a whole day shoemaking without having to touch them up at all. To be honest, they're a little bit he on the heavy side for uh, 3 quarter 3 8 They would have been better off if I'd made those out of, um, say, 7 8 3 8 or 7 8 7 16 But... It's nice now, I've got a heavy set of um, stamp and pritchel for any heavy jobs I need to do. But uh, I needed something out of 3 quarter 3 8 and as you can see I've got loads of different sizes down there. So they'll join the, the sets. Alright, let's have a quick look at the shoes. See how the holes have actually come out. I'll just cooled these off and give them a quick wire brush. I've got a nail here, this is a 5, which is what I made the pritchel and stamp for. Now they should drop in and stay there if you turn it upside down. And there you go. Could have done with a little bit more pitch on there from my toenail, but hey ho. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, that's a real nice snug fit. There's no slop. That's a good tight fit all the way around the nail. And then it'll just well, there you go, drop out. Try it another hole. In case you think I've fiddled it. There you go, and you've got the 16th sticking out, which I explained about in the previous video. And again, drops out, no slop. Stays there, perfect. Look at that, upright at the heel. Lovely. Pleased with that. Going a treat. Probably won't win any awards, but that'll go on. No bother. And it'll stay on. Right, one thing I have noticed, I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but on the inside 
edge of the fullering here on these two toenails the stamp has marked it now for me it doesn't matter because it's just a commercial shoe but if you're you know doing exams and things you don't want that and what's happened is the stamp it hasn't happened at the back here because the pritchell's been uh, the stamp's been upright more but where i've put the pitch on it's caught the inside edge I if i can show you so basically this is too wide it needs to be thinned down a little bit but if it was in wider steel it probably wouldn't matter you see where i put the pitch on it's just caught that inside edge and so for me it doesn't matter but if you're doing your exams you could just thin that down a little bit but hey ho it won't matter for me and as i say i'm going to use these now for for bigger heavier steel so again it won't matter so there you go, nice little pair that will go on my pony next week, or this week. Thanks for watching. Hope it's been helpful, and we'll catch you on the next one.